you think you get it right and it just stops. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Greetings and welcome back to another reaction video. And in this video, a, a British guy is reacting to five summer objects I only encountered after moving to America. Yes, it's another fantastic video by Lawrence Brown of Lost in the Pond. Links in the description, as always. Haven't done one of these videos for a couple of weeks, so here it is. If you are new to the channel and you like reaction videos, And don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell on because I am posting every day. If you are one of those lovely returning viewers, subscribers and members, bloody love you. Quick shout out to the merch store. We do have lots of different lines and designs of merch, including bloody love you, greetings, wow, don't grow up, it's overrated and many, many more. So check out the link in the pinned comments. Now listen, my jibber jabber. Let's get on with it. These ice cubes are a lifesaver when you run out at parties and they're made by wizards. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to things, objects, stuff, particularly summer stuff. 42 years ago in the winter of 2020, I did a video about five winter objects that I only encountered after moving to America. And this video serves as its sum. I just remember those snow shovels, that we you call them, going out to Pennsylvania and Connecticut. They got hit hard, really, really hard with snow. And I remember those, those shovels, great big shovels. And they are absolutely brilliant. We don't really get that kind of extreme weather over here. I mean, occasionally we do, but not to that sort of level. And uh, you guys got things like snow blowers and things like that, which are absolutely brilliant. Before I get back, don't forget to drop a like because it really, really helps me and the channel out. My counterpart, and as was the case with that video, I'll not be including food items. That's its own video, right? Just wanted to make that clear for people like Uncle Toby. Basically, man-made <laughs> objects that are associated with the summer. And as we go through this list, keep in mind that some of these things might have a presence in Britain. It's just that either A, I was sheltered, or B, they're shown more prominently in America. And so without further ado, let's take a look at five summer objects that I only encountered after moving to America. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that I have a love-hate relationship with ceiling fans. Now, when I say overhead fans, I'm not referring to Lost in the Pond supporters who sit in the rafters at the live events that I don't have. I'm referring to fans <laughs> on the ceiling. In British homes, they're exceedingly rare, whereas in America, I've yet to enter a house that doesn't have one. And that includes my mansion that has about three. It's not a mansion. First of all, when you're a YouTube sensation, the last thing you need in your studio is an overhead fan because it messes up your hair and your voice. I realise that this is a niche problem and that certain people need to check themselves before they wreck themselves. You can get them, the ceiling fans over here, although most houses don't have them. I do actually have an interesting story where my nephew in the States had one in his bedroom and uh, I'm not sure if it was in the middle of the night or during, I think it was during the day, thankfully. It actually, <laughs> while it was spinning and no one was hurt. That, that's why I'm sort of kind of laughing because no one was hurt, but it actually came away from the ceiling and, and landed on the bed. <laughs> Thankfully, no one got hurt. But the other first world problem that they produce is I never know how many times to pull the string. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'm exactly the same. In our old, old house, when I lived at home, my mum and dad had one on the ceiling. And it was like, one was like for a light, because they double up as a light as well. And the other one's like the fan. And I'm like, ch -ch 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 -ch. huh? Um, no, light's off, I want a light on. Oh, it's that one. And then you start doing the fan. It's like, nothing's happening. Or, <laughs> or you think you get it right and it just stops. I'm like, wow. Yes, the, uh, the struggle is real. <laughs> I've done that. Apparently on most units, it's three. And this is the sort of thing they should tell you at customs yeah. when you first arrive. Are you traveling with family? Are you here on business? Oh, and by the way, pull it three times and not four, you numpty. But I said <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. Whereas Lost in the Pond fans cheer me up. Overhead fans cool me down. And this is particularly useful when your studio doesn't have one of these. Uh, I'll admit it, when I first heard about America's propensity for using air conditioning, I thought it was weird. 
Why would you want that blowing through your home when you can just crack open a window and hear the sounds of nature? And I thought it was particularly unusual that anybody would want to partially obscure their window with this big box. We're British, we want to see <laughs> outside. We want to see what that chaffinch is up to. We want to see if it's a light drizzle or a heavy downpour. We want to see the joggers. <laughs> so I thought it was as weird as the next person. And then I met the next person. His name was Mick from Stockport. And Mick from Stockport had never actually left Stockport, but he had all kinds of views about the rest of the world, including America. And he absolutely lamented the artificial nature of American air conditioning. Two weeks later, he died of heat stroke. <laughs> Mick is, like any other British person that I talk about on this channel, entirely fictional. But he was as stubborn as I was when it came to air conditioning. We just don't have it in UK homes. But after moving to America, I saw the error of my ways. If you saw my recent video on how British heat waves ain't got nothing on America, you might have a clue as to why the absence of them would constitute a public health hazard. In many parts of the oh, yeah, exactly. I totally agree. I mean, the other day we had, it was in the 80s. I mean, as in low 80s. And for me, it was like, oh God, it's so hot. But then again, we don't have air conditioning. We've got all the windows open and stuff, and then occasionally it'd be like a gust of wind, and one of the doors would just go, bang! It's like, oh, what, you know, what happened? Sort of calm down, have a cup of tea, because we're British, and that's kind of what we do over here. Uh, and then we realised it was the, the wind blowing one of the doors closed, so it was a most welcome draft. But we do need to sort of learn to sort of wedge the door open, because the door just go, and uh, give one heart palpitations. The US, it's extremely common for the summer temperature to rise above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The simple truth is, in July, an American home wouldn't be fit for mm. humans, were it not for the installation of AC. Also, it does help that my cat has an aircon obsession. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, in the UK, inflatable mattresses are as popular as inflatable people, and you sometimes use them both at the same time. But in my experience, <laughs> British people draw the line at using them while camping. That's the blow-up mattresses, not so much the other one. In America, they have a term for this. It's called glamping. Glamping is an example of a poor man's toe, or as it says in my dick. Sorry to keep um, pausing. However, yes, glamping has taken off over here. I'm not sure if it's the same as it is for you guys in the States, but they basically have these like little wooden shacks that have just got basic needs, but that's classed as camping, but it's like a glamorous camping, so glamping. But we do have that over here now. Not quite sure when this video came out. I don't think it's that old, but uh, yes, we do have glamping over here. Although I've never been a portmanteau. It just means glamorous camping and I was introduced to this concept by none other than old-fashioned AF, my wife. So make sure you sign up as soon as you're finished watching this video. In the height of summer we went a camping in southern Indiana and I prepared myself for days on end for the enormous back pain I would feel afterward. See this is what British yeah. campers do, we gear ourselves for a night or two of blissful torture. And this was the illusion yeah. I'd afforded myself on this visit to southern Indiana. Indiana, right down to the moment. Yeah, I haven't been camping for a while, but I've done quite a few festivals. Yeah, you just don't sleep. You hardly sleep. And uh, yeah, it's awful. I don't like camping at all. <laughs> Not over here anyway. I'm six foot two. I'd need a massive tent so I can stand up. And I've got uh, arthritis in my, but my lower back as well. So I'm like, oh, I'm an old man. My knees are in and I don't get any sleep. And you wake up and you can hear everything going on in the middle of the night. Loads of people talking and stuff. And yeah, last time I went, it wasn't fun. I'm not saying camping isn't fun at, at all, but I'd need a really big tent. Uh, again, I must be American because I just need a bigger tent. And you get the big bed so it's comfy. Maybe some earplugs and uh, maybe get some air con in, in the tent as well. <laughs> that I put the last peg in the ground. And then my wife surprised me by pulling from the van an inflatable mattress and two pillows and a headboard and a dressing table. <laughs> and it filled me with dread because I'd just signed a lease elsewhere. But also because it made me panic that my wife wasn't who I thought she was. But it turns out that this is quite normal in America. People here don't go camping to recreate the living conditions of Neanderthals. They do it to sit around campfires and eat s'mores. And <sighs> s'mores. I'm going to put a link up here now, up here. Don't click it just yet. I'll leave it up till the end of the video, but I actually tried s'mores. I'll put the link, the link up here will be my second attempt with s'mores with Hershey's, but also s'mores with Reese's peanut butter cups. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Anyway, links up there, but click it at the end of the video. Make sure you keep watching.
and play songs. So whatever you learn from the 1999 American documentary, The Blair Witch Project, forget it, that's old news. Now maybe I'm becoming Americanized. Over time, I've become comfortable with America's obsession with being comfortable. That's probably why when it comes to my new house, I want to add one of these. Oh, I'm going to go out on a limb here with no data to back up what I'm about to say. Per household, America has way more front porches than Britain. Mm. I've been to various parts of the United States and having done so, one thing stands out as a constant among its streets. Friends and families getting hammered on the front porch. In Britain, we must like our privacy because if we have porches, they tend to be in the back garden slash yard. Either way, there's one element of porches that I didn't encounter until moving to America. Swing benches. Again, that's not to say we don't have them in Britain. They're just more prevalent in America. And again, I don't have data to back that up. It's an observation. I've now lived in the US for about a third of my life. And in that time, you do get a good sense for America's furniture choices. And if it turns out that my observation is numerically incorrect, the wife and I will be more than happy to tip the scales back in America's favor. That was just an excuse to show you my empty front porch. I should have played it cool. Much like this. Hmm. If you take a knife and try to cut an ice cube in half, you might have A, a mess, and B, a perfect metaphor for the final entry on our list. In other words, this is two entries in one. It can shatter everything Americans hold dear when they discover that British people on the whole don't put ice cubes in their water. And perhaps this creates an illusion that British people eschew ice cubes altogether, but that couldn't be further from the truth. We do sometimes put them in water, but also pims, mostly that. And growing up in Britain... It and cider. It's quite popular over here to have an apple cider. Obviously, this is an alcoholic drink. Drink responsibly, guys. Um, but yeah, it's been all the rage to get like a, an apple cider and just put loads of ice in and just have that in the summer. Really refreshing. In my family, we had one of those ice trays that you fill with water yeah. and put in the freezer. In fact, this is something yeah. that Americans, the British and people the world over have in common. But I was 26 years old when I discovered that you could buy pre-made ice cubes in a bag. These ice cubes are a lifesaver when you run out at parties and they're made by wizards. <laughs> yes, we uh, actually went away uh, a while back for my mother-in-law's birthday. It was a big birthday do. We went away. We did order big, like I say a big bag. It's probably small for you guys. But for us, it was a big bag of ice and chuck it in the freezer. As well as the little ice cube make not ice cube makers, but you know, the little trays you put water in and it freezes. Not very technical, is it? But I think you know what I mean. <laughs> And it just happens that my discovery of them came about in America. This is an example of me living a sheltered life. Because it turns out you can absolutely get them in Britain. They're just not displayed as prominently. I'm mostly talking about gas stations. One thing you'll notice when you drive into BP, ironically British Petroleum, is that outside of them they feature subtly decorated ice cube vendors. So if you're hosting mm -hmm. a party that night and you're running a bit behind, don't go to Walmart, go to BP. You can get everything you need. <laughs> Guys, what do you think of that video? Are you fascinated as much as I am about the differences between Britain and America? I absolutely love Lawrence, as you guys know. Put links in the description, so please check him out. Go support him. Lovely gentleman. Would you like me to do more Lost in the Pond videos? Just let me know. If you are new to the channel and you like a British guy talking nonsense, absolute nonsense, you'll be flabbergasted with the amount of nonsensical trife I just come up with. <laughs> then don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell on because I am posting every day apart from Mondays. And if you are one of these beautiful, lovely, scrum, diddly umptious people coming back, viewers, subscribers, and members, bloody love you. And while we're on the subject of bloody love you, that reminds me, we do have a new line of merch. Bloody love you merch, mugs, phone cases, t-shirts, jumpers, or sweaters, and much, much more. Check out the merch shop in the links in the comments below. And if you do buy any merch, make sure you take a photo of yourself, send it to me, and I will post you everywhere. I will put your name in lights and put you on all my social media platforms, as well as the community tab on this channel. So if that interests you, make sure you check the link out in the pinned comments. And all that leaves me to say, Mr. H, you guys are my friends, is take care, God bless. See you on the next video.